I get those goosebumps every time you, you come around, yeah You ease my mind, you make everything feel fine Worry about those comments, I'm way too numb, yeah It's way too dumb, yeah I get those goosebumps every time I need the hype, throw that to the side, yeah Hey, what's up guys? This is CJ, um, one low six on Instagram. We're doing a video right now for Dyna Performance on the LED steering wheel. I recently got it on my car. Um, 5 low, my brother is getting installed on in his car. I'll be doing the installation video. Installation is kind of confusing and a lot of guys were confused on how to install it because on this model here, the 2011 or 2014, there's no 12 volt running into the airbag from the clock spring. There's no 12 volt that you can tap into um, on the side buttons as well. There's no 12 volt. So there is a way. Uh, shout out to Cursed50. He showed me the way, the right way to do it where you don't. Because before when I did the installation, there was a wire dangling from inside the steering wheel. And honestly, that's very dangerous because you don't want to be making a U-turn and have that wire snap on you. And next thing you know, your LEDs are not working no more. So that solution is out of the way. We're done with that. Otherwise, the steering wheel is beautiful. It works great. Everything's good. But watch the video. We're going to do a full installation video on how to get this thing working, what you need to get this thing working, all the wires, everything, all the plugs, okay? All right, y'all. These are all the tools you guys are going to be needing to do this installation on the steering wheel, all right? We're going to need a blade. We're gonna need a size seven, we're gonna need a size eight, and you're gonna need an extension, you're gonna need a Torx um, T30, you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, you're gonna need wire cutters, you're gonna need an extension here for the steering wheel to remove the main bolt right there. This is a size 24. Any type of cutters, you need this to splice all your wires, multimeter to see where the 12 volts is running into your car, all right? If you guys have an aftermarket steering wheel as well and you guys want to go to the Dyna Performance steering wheel, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need your airbag, you're going to need your OEM clock spring, you're going to need your OEM steering wheel. Why do you need your OEM steering wheel? Because you need to remove all the wiring harness from the wheel, you need to remove the horn brace, you need to remove all these buttons here. And there's this plastic piece that's also bolted onto the steering wheel. You need to remove that and transfer all that over to the new wheel. We're going to be showing you each and every step in the video, so don't panic. We got your back. Let's get right into it. The first step you're going to need to do is disconnect your battery. That's the first step you want to do when you're working with any type of airbags and things like that. Disconnect the battery, all right? Just be safe. Let's do that right now. All right, you guys, so we got the factory steering wheel right here. We got the new Dyna Performance steering wheel right here. You guys can see my brother went with a full carbon wheel, the LED lights up top, and the LED screen over here. Uh, it's a very nice build quality wheel, honestly. The carbon weave and everything is very, very top notch quality. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take a T30 and remove this harness, this metal bracket right here that's connected to the horn. There's three of these, two up top, one in the middle, on the bottom. There's springs underneath this, so when you guys do reinstall it, make sure the springs are straight. Remove this metal bracket here. This is usually for your horn. The 12 volts goes here. Um, I tried also to get a 12 volt out of that wire, your horn wire, but your horn will stay on continuously. So don't do that. Um, now after that, what you do here is you're gonna see all these wires, your wiring harness for your wheel. Remove this bottom clip. There's a there's a little clip in the bottom. And pull it out. Should be a clip in the top on this side. Pull it out. Boom. This is your wiring harness down here. It's kind of like like a Christmas tree type of situation there. Get that out and yank this one out too. Then you have your ground. Your ground is bolted on over there. You want to unbolt that. And get that out of the situation. Firing harness, you're gonna have it like this. All right, put this to the side. You wanna grab your factory steering wheel, turn it around. There should be four more bolts right back here. Remove these four. 
this is just for the plastic housing covering you can slowly just pick this up this is just a plastic housing cover for your wheel put this to the side the next step you're gonna do is flip the wheel upside down it's gonna look like this we're gonna remove these the best way to remove them is to remove this whole piece here and they should slide right out they clipped in so they'll clip right out sometimes they just slide right out so we'll do that right now you're gonna see three wires that are coming with the steering wheel one black for ground one red for positive 12 volts the blue one you don't need it for the 2013 to 2014 or 2011 or 2014 mustang so when you do the wiring you can just tuck this to the side like that and just get rid of that you don't need that so what we're going to do right now is we're going to put the steering wheel back together we got all the factory parts right here we're going to put them back in the car i mean back on the wheel and then we'll get the wheel onto the car all right stay tuned y'all all right you guys right now we're just taking off this hub right now it's a 24 get in here remove this now that you got your wheel taken off your next step is going to be taking off the plastic piece on top it just basically unclips and you pull it out that's it the second step after that is you got to unscrew these two bolts right here one here and one down on this side i think they're a size eight or size seven remove those and this whole bottom panel will come right off they're just clips two here and two down there and unclip it and that'll come off and then there is one bolt here one bolt here there's two bolts here and there's one bolt right back when you remove this bottom piece there's a bolt back here inside that holds whole this whole place in you want to remove that you remove that in order to reach the clock spring bottom connector and i'll explain that more on the next steps and how to do the wiring and everything all right since you guys have unbolted these two back here you're gonna have to remove this side column piece right here. We're gonna have to remove this Mustang logo. Um, side column piece removes, there's a Christmas tree like this in the backhand side, remove that. And you pull it from here and then you have to remove this. And when you remove this, it gotta be a little tough and rough with it, man. You know, and it should just come right off. That, and then there's a little pin back here. Push it down, pull it out. And you're off there's that and then this will come off slide it out and it slides right out this is where the push the push pin goes in right here the christmas tree on this side right there all right so after that you get the side panel off you remove this you remove this bottom piece you want to come here there's a screw here screw here and there's a screw back down in here i will show you guys let me grab the camera there's a screw right down in that hole right there you guys can see it and this whole piece will come off right here all right there we go you just pull it right out and it'll come right out you can see how dirty this thing is you can clean this up so after we get that removed you're gonna see um the clock spring your clock screen is gonna be connected right here here's your factory clock spring it goes in like this and it bolts on one and two right there. So one connector from your steering wheel is right here. The other connector is down here, right down there. Boom and boom right there. So now we're gonna get into the technical part of the situation. On this pin connector, there's an empty slot on the wiring harness. There's an empty slot right there next to the yellow and red. Right there is an empty slot in there and there's an empty slot right next to the purple and blue wire. This is a 5.0 but I'm pretty sure they're all the same. Next to the purple and the blue wire is an empty slot right there. So once you guys, what you guys need to do now, this is going to be a little complicating, um, is you're going to need to find, you can order it online, the pin connectors. The pins that go into these so you would just need to take your red wire we'll show you again how to do it we'll show you that way you're not confused I'm, I'm gonna repeat it again if you're confused this is gonna go like this right onto your stock clock spring 
do not rotate your clock spring keep it straight how it is and if you do by accident rotate it it's going to be a two spin to the left and a half tight it'll max out two spin to the right it's going to be straight then two spin to the right is going to be a little bit more than half it'll be maxed out so remember two spins you want to be right dead in center okay because the last thing you want is have it like this have it like this and you're driving and you try to make a u-turn and the u-turn doesn't happen because the clock spring is not all the way centered out so you got to center it out all right so after we get that um the pin next to the orangish reddish wire and the yellow wire um there's an empty slot in there all right so you see that empty slot next to the yellow and the orange wire that's where you need to put that pin in we're going to talk about it more when we get technical with it all right so the main step here is you're going to need to find these type of wires here with these pins all right why are we doing these pins is because for one you could plug it it goes in from here to the back you could push it in like this one that i'm about to push in you could put it into that empty slot and it'll go right in crimp disconnector to this wire right here and what we're gonna do now is take this with the red wire connect that right into there get a good connection some electrical tape there um, here's your wiring harness here oh so you have to loosen this up and you take your wire slide it make sure when you slide this wire in like this that that wire like that faces up and you push it in and once it locks in so now see it's locked in it's not coming out push this back in get that in there move this aside for now plug that in good to go it's the best way to do it without having you having to deal with none of the bs wire dangling on the side all right perfect and we'll take this wire from the bottom this one will move to the side for now air back to the side this one is going to go underneath all the way in the bottom it's going to connect uh, right there this one's going to connect in the bottom on the side right there so you hear that click that's good yeah make sure you put this make sure you put this wire harness below this thing or you could put it like have, just have some room here that's where your airbag will go and leave some room there and leave some room right there so just tuck it behind these two holes these two little pins right there and you should be good put your airbag bag aside now you're gonna have two grounds one ground is coming off your wiring harness and one ground is coming off of your steering wheel the blue wire you don't need for our cars for 2011 to 2014 mustang you don't need the blue wire i would just tuck the wire in like that if you really want to get creative with it you could even like tuck this blue wire inside the oem factory harness but it's like you could do it like that if you want to all right i just i would just keep it to the side like tuck it in the bottom that way you don't see it you're never gonna see it anyways so just tuck that there positive is good there remember we're gonna put black electrical tape there just to be on the safe side you don't want to touch any metal part you know since there's a little bit of metal showing right there um the ground we're gonna get the ground connected this is for your horn that's what we'll do later uh let's get the ground connected right now right guys so you see this black wire right here this is your factory ground that comes with the harness all right this black this black one that's a ground you use the factory bolt and you just put both of them right there and you just bolt it on up right there just use that use these two wires ground it right there the power is connected i remember i told you guys to use those special pin connectors uh you can find them on ebay on amazon try to do a research on them you'll find them and pull that little red pin back a little bit push it until it clicks you'll hear a click and push the red pin back again and you're lock and loaded it will not come out 
this will not pull it and you will not come out we're gonna put electrical tape here just to secure this and basically all of this is done all of this is done now we're gonna move down to this bottom section here it's the same thing same situation you pull this red pin back push the new pin in and you would just have to run the wire from there and I'll show you where to run the wire to to get power to the steering wheel alright you guys so you gotta take this red pin off right here in order to put this bracket, this little pin connector inside the empty slot so all I did was just put your nail here and just pull it and just pull it carefully and it'll pull back about a quarter inch or so got it bend the cable get this and just see what's the good connection so after you get the pin connected into that connector, plug it on in. Here's the wire we got. I cut about, three about but yeah, about three, four feet, okay? Now you're gonna take this wire. Now let me show you what you gotta do here. Here's the magic. So there's two ways on doing this, all right? This is the wiring you get for the 2013 and 14 Mustang wiring, OBD2 right here. You're gonna use this one. This one is not for your car. We're not gonna use this and that's it okay now let me show you what we're gonna do here okay there's two ways to do this first way is you're gonna you could run this wire to the fuse box there's car has two fuse box one inside on the passenger side down there and the other one under the under the hood uh, you can run this into an ignition switch fuse i think it's a 15 amp or 20 amp i don't know i don't remember you could run it that way so when you turn it on into it the the power key your your wheel lights up okay but i don't want to wrestle through running all these wires and then messing with fuses over there so i'm going to do it my way there's two ways to do it okay i'm going to tell you both i'm going to show you guys both ways to do it right now first way the one that i'm going to do it is you take this wiring harness it comes with okay take this off get rid of that this wire here is going to connect into the a module there's a module that the car the company sent it looks like this this is the module this connects here just like that you got blue light okay and then you have this to go into your obd2 which is down here connect it in right now the battery is disconnected but you'll see a blue light okay so now here's the tricky part here's the tricky part that you're gonna have to figure out but i'm gonna teach you real quick you see this right here See this fuse it should be a five amp fuse in here five amp fuse close this up you're gonna take this okay and you're gonna use this and you're gonna splice this wire right here with this wire the one that's coming from the wheel okay you splice it right there Let's take this wire you see that? Watch out. Take this wire now. Back there. You ready, 5 Yeah. There you go, baby. You guys, so I ran the wires underneath the steering column all the way back. Um, take this red wire, the positive 12 volt. And you're gonna splice it into this fuse wire right here okay this is my way of doing it um the only downside about this is that each time you will turn your ignition on the steering wheel will not light up you will just have to disconnect the obd2 like a little bit and connect it back up for it to work i don't have the problem with that because i don't want to run i don't want to have two wires running you get what i mean i don't want to have two wires running one from back here to the fuse box and another one back here and the fuse you would have to tap into is the ignition key fuse with continuous 12 volt power on ignition remember that 12 volts is what you need to light this bad boy up okay we did a test run right now everything is working everything is good to go um i'm just gonna get all these wires tucked up and we're gonna get this module here uh, i don't know wherever he wants it bolted up we'll bolt it up um, I usually I have mine right here on my car like this if he wants it somewhere down here but he's driving a stick shift so you don't want a clutch leg to kick that um, so we'll see where he wants that bolted up and we'll go from there all right guys I'm just putting the 24 size bolt back on and remember you want to spec it to the spec 
torque amount. Now the next step is we're gonna put this metal bracket on. This is for your horn. Uh, remember your springs are gonna go one, two, and three. Feed the nut right through it. And make sure you got enough room, man, because like you see this wire right here, it's in the way. Make sure it's not in the way of the bolts or anything like that. Like you see the wire down here. Make sure that's all tucked away so you get a perfect, nice and snug, tight fit. Just get that nut right in there. Everything put back, the metal bracket, three bolts, remember that. Just reverse everything you guys did earlier with the factory steering wheel, taking everything off, putting everything back on. Don't forget this wire up here. That's the ground, that's the power for the horn cable here. Uh, this is this is 12 volts right here, so be careful, okay? Um, I'm gonna put your airbag back on. Before you put everything back on, guys, just double check if you guys got every wire tight, everything is tucked away properly. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes we do forget, but you're gonna take this airbag right here, put it back in, get a nice, it's just gonna be a little tight squeeze. All right, you guys, so we have about wrapped up here with the steering wheel install. All the wires are tucked, you're not seeing anything. You got one wire going from here to the back plate. Everything's secure, you could do a full U-turn. You won't have no wires splitting up. But, mem but remember guys, this type of situation is only happening right now with a 2011 to 2014 Mustang. Any other vehicle, it's a straight plug and play situation. You're not gonna run into these problems. Um, Cause our car, our airbag, 12 volts, if you plug onto that, when you do the install, put that put that wire to that horn and you're gonna see it light up, all right? Um, but we got this thing running. Like I said, I did it my way. I didn't have a problem with pulling the OBD2 out and pulling it back in, but I'm just gonna get this thing started here. Pull it out, pull it back in, and there you go. My brother wanted that logo. We got him that logo. Um, the car is obviously off, but Here's the menus here. You got your RPM, your miles per hour, your fluids and everything, your battery voltage, your engine oil percentage, your actual gas percentage, how much it is, and these are your timings and all that. Um, I'm gonna start it up for you real quick. As you can see, I like to keep it on this RPM, so it shows me the RPM. Right now, my brother actually did a custom setting where he has blue, blue, teal, blue, and teal, blue, and red. Get up on the RPM a little bit. You guys can see it works perfect. Everything is good with the wheel. Everything is working as you can see the buttons. Everything works. The volume button works. Skip the song works. Everything is working, guys. Cruise control on, off. I'm excited, man. Thank you, Dana Performance. You guys actually killed it. And thank you, Cursed 5.0, for this. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go sleep now. <laughs> I get those goosebumps every time you, you come around, yeah. You ease my mind, you make everything feel fine. Worry about those comments. I'm way too numb, yeah. It's way too dumb, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time. I need the hype. Throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time.